In this video, I want to talk about um, thermal energy. Uh, what is thermal energy? And the related questions, what is heat and what is temperature? Um, these are things that sometimes get taken for granted. Like for instance, the very simple question of what are we actually measuring when we measure the temperature of an object? What does that mean to measure the temperature of the object? What does that number actually mean? Um, and, and things like that. And it turns out it all comes back to this concept of energy and conservation of energy type things. Um, so for this section, I'm gonna borrow some notes as you can see from my gen ed physics class, because um, I want some visuals on this. The first and most important key concept for this whole section is that, um, go, that basically everything in the universe is in motion. Um, it often doesn't seem that way to us. Um, it looks to us like something can just be sitting still. Like I can just take this pen and sit it on my hand and make a very simple statement that the pen has no kinetic energy. But really, in a sense, that's not true. Because if you zoomed in microscopically on the pen, what you would see is something like what's shown on the slide uh, right now, that in fact, every single atom, every single molecule of that pen is actually moving all the time. And, you know, what we learn in chemistry class about these structures, these, you know, molecules and what they look like and how things are bonded together, that's all well and good. But the universe is not just a static photograph like what you see in your chemistry textbook. In fact, the universe is in motion, everything is in motion. Um, and motion is just built into things at the most basic microscopic level. And where there's motion, there's energy because kinetic energy, remember that with kinetic energy, there's no such thing as positive and negative kinetic energy, it's always positive. So if you have a bunch of atoms moving randomly in different directions, the total kinetic energy of that system does not average out to zero because an atom moving in this direction, an atom moving in this direction, both have positive kinetic energy that would get added together if you consider the total kinetic energy of every single atom in the material. Um, now that sounds like a very daunting task to try to worry about the kinetic energy of every single atom in a material all the time, because this is something that averages out at the macroscopic level, but the kinetic energy doesn't average out. Um, but that's what the concept of thermal energy is for. Thermal energy basically measures, I'm oversimplifying a little bit here, but thermal energy basically measures that microscopic kinetic energy. So thermal energy is a measure of this microscopic energy that's really hard for us to see with our human senses. Um, so right along the same lines then, the temperature of an object is a measure of kinetic energy as it turns out. A te the, the temperature of an object is literally the average amount of kinetic energy of the uh, atoms and molecules in that material. So temperature is a measure of motion. Temperature is a measure of kinetic energy. A lot of times if you talk to physicists, they'll use temperature and speed almost interchangeably um, because something that has high temperature has high speed and something that has you know low temperature has low speed at this most basic level. So those two things are almost you know, overlapping and kind of interchangeable in, in concept. Now, if we put together uh, two things that have different temperatures, what that means is we're putting together two things where the atoms on average have different amounts of kinetic energy. So what's gonna happen because of conservation of energy, the higher temperature object has more energy, the lower temperature object has less energy, so because of all these little microscopic interactions that are happening that we can't see, um, what's gonna happen is that energy is transferred from the high temperature object to the low temperature object. So there's constantly a flow of energy coming out of higher temperature objects and going into lower temperature objects. Um, you know, for example, I have a hot cup of coffee next to me right now. And this hot cup of coffee is hot. It's hotter than the air in the room. What that means from a physics standpoint is that 
this cup of coffee is constantly giving off energy, which we call heat. And the temperature of the coffee is going down. The temperature of the air in the room is going up because conservation of energy dictates that the amount of energy given off by the coffee equals the amount of energy absorbed by the air in the room. So temperature is a measure of energy. Energy flows naturally from high temperature to low temperature. Um, and uh, that's what we refer to as heat. I already said that. Um, another interesting little side question that I really don't want to get into much in this class, but I'll just mention it in passing. Um, you've probably heard the, the term absolute zero with temperature. Um, absolute zero is the idea that eventually, if you cool something down enough, you will eventually reach the point where you actually do have something where all the atoms are stationary and there is no motion left. That's called absolute zero because once you reach that point, you can't cool something down anymore. Not for practical reasons, but just for theoretical, philosophical reasons. The least amount of motion something can ever have is zero. The least amount of kinetic energy something can ever have is zero. So that's what the lowest possible temperature that could ever even be conceived of would be is the temperature at which you have no motion left. And that's referred to as absolute zero, which is at T equals zero on the Kelvin temperature scale, which is why we like Kelvin in the science world, because T equals zero actually means something in Kelvin. It doesn't really mean anything in uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. Uh, however, in reality, it turns out that uh, zero temperature, absolute zero temperature can never actually be reached in practice, but that's not something we're gonna worry about. Um, so anyway, when you picture a material at the microscopic level, you should picture all of its atoms constantly being in motion. So if it's a solid, the atoms are packed together very, very tightly, but they're still moving. They're vibrating and kind of moving back and forth in place and just kind of shuffling around and jiggling around and bumping into each other. Um, if you add more heat to that system, you add more motion to that system and you cause it to melt is the term we normally say. When it melts, it becomes a liquid where now you kind of lose the structure in the material. Um, the atoms and molecules are now free to move around a bit more. They're still tightly packed together, but they're now moving around much more randomly and much more significantly, like you can see in this animation here, if you add even more heat to the system, um, you break down even that structure that's left in the liquid and you boil the material. And when you boil the material, you actually separate the molecules from each other and you still have crazy amount of motion of everything moving around randomly in all these different crazy directions. Um, and that's what that's what a, a gas or, or a vapor is. So the air in the room with you right now, it might be tempting to picture the air in the room as being very kind of serene and pure, but the reality is that it's very violent and chaotic and there are constantly atoms flying around, bouncing off the walls, hitting you, crashing into each other, and, and um, the more temperature and the more heat you add to something, the more it becomes disorganized, chaotic, violent, um, and fast. Everything starts to gain more and more and more kinetic energy and you just get more motion and more stuff going on. And that's basically what temperature is and what heat is. And um, you know the, the idea that heat is actually energy um, and temperature is actually energy and motion.